Well, it all began here at Smith, and I'm truly grateful for that. I went to the college counselor when we before graduation and said, there has to be a job somewhere in this country that I do not now have to go to typing school. I mean, after this fabulous four years at Smith. And at that time, women could be teachers, nurses, and, and uh, secretaries. And or the other half of my class, I think, was getting married. But that wasn't what my objective was. And, and the counselor said, IBM is actively recruiting women. If you have the analytical, logical ability, they'll teach you everything you need to know. Well, when I went to work for IBM, we wore white gloves to work. There was smoking, and, and a lot of people smoked back then. The men could smoke at their desks, but the ladies had to go to the ladies' room to smoke. We sang Ever Onward IBM out of their hymnals. And when they had evening events where the spouses were included, the men would not talk to me because they didn't want their spouses to know that they were working with a woman. In 1966, eight years later, I was pregnant, and IBM thought you were so fragile that you had to go home at six months and wait for three months. Well, that did not appeal to me. I loved what I did. My husband was just out of law school, so we needed me to work. The bank downtown in St. Louis wanted to hire me, but they had the same policy. So. My husband, with his new law degree, incorporated me. The bank felt protected that they could hire a corporation and not a pregnant lady. Thus, I founded my business in 1966. I named the company, you, a woman wouldn't have put her name in a company in those days, System Service Enterprises, Inc. The system service came from my first job at IBM. They called us system service representatives, which became systems engineers later. So system service worked with my initials, Susan S. And on enterprises, that's worked with my initial, Elliot. And I figured I could be anything when I grew up. And so I could go with that as an official name, but branded SSE my initials. In 1983, we were back in St. Louis, and we went to a charitable auction. On the list was one of the original IBM PCs. And I said to my husband going out to the auction, can you imagine having a computer in your home? I mean, it just seemed impossible. Well, bless his heart, he raised his hand, we got the PC for $4,000. And at the end of the dinner, walking out, the gentleman that my husband competed against in the auction, who was a good friend, said to me, what are you going to do with that computer? And I said, I'm going to revive my business. On the following Monday, June 27th, 1983, I was in my basement of our house, light bulb in the ceiling, washer and dryer behind me, and a piece of plywood as my desk. Um, it was so spontaneous, of course, I had no business plan, all the, no strategy, no nothing that they advise entrepreneurs to do today. And the first thing I did, which was very fortunate, was hook up with some old friends from IBM. The beauty of that was IBM had just opened a retail store for their new PCs and it was in downtown St. Louis. So they made me a partner. People who could never have afforded an IBM machine, small business people, were coming into the store. I mean, Big Blue was it. It was the answer. And this, they would ask the salesman, okay, what do I buy? And the salesman would say, well, you need this and this and this, and SSE will come out and install it for you. And they, everybody would say, okay, Fine. Uh, in 2008, that was 50 years later for me from 58, 
and 25 years on the PC, we had an extraordinary celebration in our office, celebrating the 25 and 50 years, and about that time, I made my daughter president of SSE, and she is doing an extraordinary job today. Just having the mother-daughter combo, I think is also very unusual, and uh, it's really just another blessing.